Okay, so we are finally ready to express the quadratic approximation of a multivariable function in vector form. So I have the whole thing written out here where f is the function that we are trying to approximate, x0, y0 is the constant point about which we are approximating, and then this entire expression is the quadratic approximation, which I've talked about in past videos, and if it seems very complicated or absurd or you're unfamiliar with it, and just dissecting it real quick, this over here is the constant term, this is just going to evaluate to a constant, everything over here is the linear term because it just involves taking a variable multiplied by a constant. And then the remainder, every one of these components will have two variables multiplied into it. So like x squared comes up and x times y and y squared comes up. So that's the quadratic term. Quadratic. Now to vectorize things, first of all, let's write down the input, the input variable x, y as a vector. And typically we'll do that with a bold faced x to indicate that it's a vector. And its components are just going to be the, the single variables x and y, the non-bold faced. So this is the vector representing the variable input. And then correspondingly, a bold faced x with a little subscript o, x naught, is going to be the constant input, the single point in space near which we are approximating. So when we write things like that, this constant term, simply enough, is going to look like evaluating your function at that, that bold faced x naught. So that's probably the easiest one to handle. Now the linear term, this looks like a dot product. And if we kind of expand it out as the dot product, it looks like we're taking the, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and then the partial derivative with respect to y. And we're evaluating both of those at that bold-faced x naught input, x naught as its input. Now each one of those partial derivatives is multiplied by variable minus constant number. So this looks like taking the dot product here, I'm going to erase the word linear. We're taking it with x minus x naught and y minus y naught. This is just expressing the same linear term but as a dot product. But the convenience here is that this is totally the same thing as saying the gradient of f, gradient of f, that's the vector that contains all the partial derivatives, evaluated at the special input, x naught. And then we're taking the dot product between that and the variable vector, bold-faced x, minus x naught. Since when you do this component-wise, bold-faced x minus x naught, if we kind of think here, it'll be x the variable minus x naught the constant, y the variable minus y naught the constant, which is what we have up there. So this expression kind of vectorizes the whole linear term. And now the beef here, the hard part, how are we gonna, how are we gonna vectorize this quadratic term? Now that's what I was leading to in the last couple videos where I talked about how you express a quadratic form like this with a matrix. And the way that you do it, I'll just kind of scroll down to give us some room. The way that you do it is we'll have a matrix whose components are all of these constants. It'll be this one half times the second partial derivative evaluated there. And I'm just gonna, for convenience sake, I'm gonna just take one half times the second partial derivative with respect to x and leave it as understood that we're evaluating it at this point. And then um, on the other diagonal, you have one half times the other uh, kind of partial derivative with respect to y two times in a row. And then we're gonna multiply it by, by this constant here, but this term kind of gets broken apart into two different components. If you'll remember in the quadratic form video, it was always things where it was a and then two b and c as your constants for uh, the quadratic form. So if we're interpreting this as two times something, then it gets broken down and on one corner it shows up as f x y and on the other one kind of one half f x y so like both of these together are going to constitute the entire mixed partial derivative and then the way that we express the quadratic form is we're going to multiply this by well by what well the first component is whatever the thing is that's squared here so it's going to be that x minus x naught and then the second component is whatever the, the other thing squared is, which in this case is y minus y naught. And of course we take that same vector, but we put it in on the other side too. So, so let me make a little bit of room, because this is gonna be wide. Um, so we're gonna take that same vector and then kind of put it on its side. So it'll be x minus x naught as the first component, and then y minus y not as the second component, but it's written horizontally. And this, if you multiply out the entire matrix, is gonna give us the same expression that you have up here. And if that seems unfamiliar, if that seems, you know, how do you go from there to there, 
um, check out the video on quadratic forms, or you can check out the article where I'm talking about the quadratic approximation as a whole. I kind of go through the computation there. Now this matrix right here is almost the Hessian matrix. This is why I made a video about the Hessian matrix. It's not quite because everything has a one half multiplied into it. So I'm just going to kind of take that out and we'll remember we have to multiply a one half in at some point. But otherwise it is the Hessian matrix, which we denote with a kind of bold faced H, bold faced H, and uh, emphasize that it's the Hessian of F. The Hessian is something you take of a function. And like I said, uh, remember each of these terms we should be thinking of as evaluated on the special input point, evaluating it at that special you know, bold-faced x naught input point. I was just kind of too lazy to write it in each time the x naught y naught x naught y naught x naught y naught all of that. Um, but what we have then is we're multiplying it on the right by this whole vector is the variable vector bold-faced x minus bold-faced x naught. That's what that entire vector is. And then we kind of have the same thing on the right, you know, bold-faced vector x minus x naught except that we transpose it. We kind of put it on its side. And the way you denote that, you have a little T there for transpose. So this term captures all of the quadratic information that we need for the approximation. So just to put it all together, if we go back up when we put the, the constant term that we have, the linear term, and this quadratic form that we just found all together, what we get is that the quadratic approximation of F, which is a function, we'll think of it as a vector input, bold-faced X, it equals the function itself evaluated at, you know, whatever point we're approximating near, plus the gradient of f, which is kind of its vector analog of a derivative, evaluated at that point, so this is a constant vector, dot product with the, with the variable vector x minus the constant vector x naught, that whole thing, plus one half the then we'll just copy down this whole quadratic term up there. The variable minus the constant multiplied by the Hessian, which is kind of like an extension of the second derivative to multivariable functions. And we're evaluating that. No, let's see, we're evaluating it at the, at the constant, at the constant x naught. And then on the right side, we're multiplying it by the variable x minus x naught. And this, this is the quadratic approximation in vector form. And the important part is now it doesn't just have to be of a two variable input. You could imagine plugging in a three variable input or a four variable input. And all of these terms make sense. You know, you take the gradient of a four variable function, you'll get a vector with four components. You take the Hessian of a four variable function, you would get a four by four matrix. And all of these terms make sense. And I think it's also prettier to write it this way because it looks a lot more like a Taylor expansion in, single, in the single variable world. You have, you know, a constant term plus the value of a derivative times x minus a constant plus one half what's kind of like the second derivative term. It's kind of like taking an x squared, but this is how it looks in the vector world. So in that way, it's actually maybe a little bit more familiar than writing it out in the full, you know, component by component term where it's easy to kind of get lost in the weeds there. So, um, full vectorized form of the quadratic approximation of a scalar-valued multivariable function. Boy, is that a lot to say.